The Tynanweir Metro is the busiest light rail system outside of London. And when it launched in 1980, it was considered cutting edge. But now, nearly 40 years on, the trains that still run on the network are reaching the end of their working life and need replacing. In 2016, Nexus, who's the public organisation that manages the Metro, decided to make an application to the Department of Transport for funds to replace the trains. And they started to listen to people across Tyne and Weir to understand their needs for the new train fleet. We wanted to develop a consultation strategy and we thought that the Open Lab research complemented that nicely by opening up those digital channels and allowing a wider range of people to participate. We led one part of this public consultation and this video is going to present what we did and the findings that came from that work we did with people. It's so important that we involve local people as much as possible so that when we start that conversation with uh, potential suppliers we start with a big body of evidence from local people about what you want from a new train fleet. In November 2016, we worked with a group of 20 co-researchers from across Tyne and Weir and with a range of needs relating to Metro. And we worked with local schools and BTEC students from South Tyneside College. We held a series of four workshops where we worked with co-researchers to share experiences of using Metro, both good and bad, work out important considerations for new trains and develop ideas for new train features. We held seven pop-up labs in public places across the region where we listened to people's experiences of Metro and got their feedback on the findings from the co-researcher workshops. So we've been asking people to watch short videos to say whether they agree with what we're suggesting is important or the wish list ideas or disagree, but also tell us a little bit more. And that's where it gets really interesting, because we're getting more insights about what the pros and cons are of each of the ideas that have been shared. Throughout November we worked with our co-researchers and, and talked to people across Tyne and Weir to understand what's important about metro trains today, what they'd like to see in the metro cars of the future, those kinds of things they'd like uh, Nexus to focus on when they're redesigning the new trains. And the next part of the conversation is to make sure that's a bigger conversation and to get people to come to the website and look at what other people have shared rate how important or not they think those considerations are and maybe leave a comment of their own. At the end of 2017 we looked at all the work that we did with our co-researchers, all the ideas that were shared by schools and the work that was done by colleges and the feedback and comments we got from visitors to pop-up labs and our website and we came up with six main points for the design of new trains. We detail those points in our final report to Nexus, but we also recognise it's important that people across Tyne and Weir understand our findings. So I'm now going to hand over to our co-researchers who are going to explain what we found out. What we realised was that the, uh, it's difficult when you get onto a crowded train, especially if you're in the centre of the door area and you're having to push yourself into the train. Um, that's a, an issue that uh, perhaps a more open layout would help to address. A layout where the, there was more seating around the edges with maybe flip-up seating, which would have meant that when nobody's sitting in his seat, the, the seat would flip up, creating more space in the centre of the car for things like luggage, for buggies, for wheelchairs, as well as more people to move down to the centre of the car when the train is very crowded. And it would also eliminate the problem of antisocial behaviour with people putting feet on seats, because if you have seats along the edge of the car, that's clearly impossible. We found that the space between carriages was wasted space, so we could um, increase the capacity if we had just one long single carriage. We talked a lot about um, not having solid seating. I guess if you're a wheelchair user with a friend, 
Nice to have a seat next to you. A bit like on the bus, you can choose to flip two up, leave one down, flip one up, leave two down. It was difficult to, um, to sit next to a luggage because of the way the seats are positioned currently, facing each other. And then obviously a lot of people use the metro for shopping, so it's like shopping bags, not necessarily like suitcases. On other trains, there's shelving there where you put your heavy stuff, the shelving above where you put lighter stuff, in between the seats. Yeah, on the metro, you just have it on your knee. Yeah, people were quite puzzled about that. Being able to have some space large enough to accommodate a bike would be, would be great. Because it's a whole untapped bunch of people. More people then could combine cycling with a normal bike and the metro. So in the workshops, we discussed a lot about the provision of real-time information. A lot of people said that it was very important to them in planning their journey and even when they're at the station on the platform. We sort of discussed how there isn't much provision for real-time information at the moment. You only really know when or where the train is when you get to the station on the platform and look up at the screen. So we talked a lot about how that information could be shared and how it could be delivered, whether that be sort of a smartphone app or through a website, or there were some more sort of creative ideas as to how that could be displayed. So there was a lot of um, discussion as well about sort of the way tickets are purchased and, and how tickets are stored. Um, there were a few ideas about sort of having an on-train Wi-Fi network that then you could connect up to using an app. And that would allow you to buy tickets, top up your pop card, or even if you forget to touch your pop card in at the station, you could do that via the app when you're on the train. So it just relieves some of that sort of uh, pressure, ad admin if you like, before getting on the train, you can do it on board. Some people talked about the clarity of the driver announcements, um, people who were um, hard of hearing especially. So there were some discussions about how this could be solved, either some sort of speech to text system that relayed the message up on the screens, or whether the driver announcements, or the most common driver announcements were sort of pre-recorded so that they could just be played off again with the, with the audio but the text on the screens as well. Yes, we talked a lot about um, the visibility of staff on metro trains, um, especially of a night time. There really aren't that many. And it was felt as a group really that um, this needed to be addressed and we needed to see more people on the, or more staff on the train. The discussion around having the CCTV um, and being able to sort of crowdsource it, share it uh, online in real time and having displays on the carriages as well. There was a lot of um, discussion about comfort, certainly about heating. It's nice to have big picture windows to see out of, but the opening part of the windows is pretty small. And then when they are open, especially going through the tunnels, it makes it really noisy. So that can uh, affect your comfort. You need to have good contrast on the outside and the inside of the carriages for both sighted people and visually impaired people because you need, need to be able to identify quickly where the doors are, when, where the seats are, where the grab rails are. So you need to have clear, contrastable colours. If you're not already on the platform waiting for the train and you're walking towards one, some of the gaps are really quite um, wide, so it can be that wheelchairs will find it difficult. The need to look at how to resolve that problem. Well, I think we all agreed that the buttons that they are now are too small. It should be something which is more like touch sensitive, um, so that it's in a bigger area. Everybody across the board um, all agreed that that is one of the things that must change. They haven't thought out the fact that we don't travel alone. We do have families and we do have friends and we like to sit with them. <laughs> Two of our trains would be all right if, say, for example, it was going to go a long way outside China and for example. At the moment, the reliability of the metro is being enhanced by more heavy maintenance uh, checkups at the depot and therefore that is how they can keep the whole fleet going. But the big problem I believe is since the Sunderland Dutch Dungeon 
they haven't got sufficient of sufficient number of spare trains in case there's a breakdown. Inside the metro train, we have a continuous electronic message, which is very good. I'm hard of hearing. I prefer to look at that rather than listen to announcements. Co-researchers also discussed the importance of a green and sustainable metro, including ideas such as roof-mounted solar panels. A huge day for the Tainuia Metro, funding for a new train fleet. Can you explain a bit about what we've got? Yes, it's fantastic news that we've received today that the government is making available £337 million to help us to get on with the business of buying a new train fleet. It's a great testament to the work of an awful lot of people in the area. Uh, we've had lots of support from around the region, including from passengers, and we'll now start the process straight away of buying new trains, and we expect them to enter into service from late 2021.